Hey, what's up guys? Jason here coming at you with another video here on the PC Fun YouTube channel. Today we're taking you guys out to do some bed fishing for giant smallmouth. So we're gonna do a little bit of bed fishing, show you the techniques, hopefully get some underwater bed footage. And then we're also gonna go over and talk about how important it is to care for these fish after you catch them. We wanna make sure that this resource stays around for a long time for our kids to go out and catch these big fish as well. So as long as you do it right, these fish will be okay. The name of the game when it comes to fishing is covering water. I'm a believer that if you go out on a lake and you take the time to cover water and break it down, that you'll be able to find the fish. Now bed fishing is not much different. When you're out bed fishing, you're gonna to wanna to go on the lake and kinda of just take a look around. Locate the shorelines that have gravel and sand and are protected from the prevailing wind for the season. By going out and doing that, you'll be able to locate some of the prime bedding areas and catch some fish just like we do in this video today. So as always, I really like to sit down and do a tackle logic segment with you. The tackle logic segment is basically gonna allow you to go out and mimic what we do on the water and hopefully you'll find the same success that we have. So first, we're gonna jump into the baits that we really like to use when targeting bedded smallmouth. So the first bait that I really like to use when going out bed fishing is a shaky head. So what I have here is a Get Bit Baits Hyper Craw that's paired up with an Omega shaky head. Now the reason I really like the Omega shaky head is because it has a nice flat bottom and it allows that bait to always sit in a defensive position on the bottom. These fish are used to feeding on crayfish in the body of water we're in all the time. So when they have that defensive posture, it's a very natural protection instinct for that smallmouth to want to get that crayfish out of the bed. Crayfish are notorious for being bed robbers and they'll go in there and gobble up those eggs in a heartbeat. So number one on our bed fishing list is the shaky head. Okay guys, number two bait for chasing big bedded smallmouth bass is a two. Now, if you've ever fished smallmouth, you're not gonna be a stranger to this bait. And when it comes to bedded fish, it's no different. Again, this is another great crayfish imitator. You can see here, um, anytime you're bed fishing, you either one, wanna really imitate something natural, or two, you wanna really be able to see that bait. So this bright orange color is very easy for me, the angler, to see, so I can tell when that fish picks the bait up off the bed to move it. Um, and it also imitates crayfish in northern Wisconsin very well. So you're just going to throw this tube out there and you're going to drag it really slowly on the bed. And one of the key things when you're bed fishing is to really keep that bait in place. So sit there and just shake it right in place and that fish is going to grab it and move it off the bed. Okay guys, last but certainly not least is the drop shot. Personally, I believe the drop shot is the most effective technique for catching bedded bass. And there is one reason and one reason only why I think that. This little sinker right here on the bottom of the drop shot, when heavy enough, will allow you to keep that bait stationary in the hot spot of that bed. So you can simply drop that bait straight down and pop it back up in place. That's gonna make for a very, very deadly setup because that fish is gonna become irritated and they're gonna pick that bait up off the bed and try to run it off. Next guys, we're gonna talk about techniques and how you can get that fish on the bed to bite. All right, so we've talked about the baits. You see we've used a Get Bit Baits tube, Get Bit Baits finesse worm, and a Get Bit Baits hyper crawl. All of these baits are very buoyant and they're great for keeping them up off the bottom and irritating those smallmouth on their beds. Now, let's talk about techniques. When you're fishing on a bed, you always wanna to try to place that bait in what we call the hot spot. So every bed is gonna be a bit different and each one is gonna have individual hot spots that the fish really wants to protect. Once you figure that out, you want to irritate the fish by putting that bait constantly in the hot spot until it picks your bait up. So a hot spot can be identified by watching and reading the fish's reaction. You'll see that either the tail flicker or the fish will do a quick tight circle or their fins will even perk up. This is what's called defensive posture. Those fish are getting aggressive and they're ready to attack. Once you figure out what that area is, make sure you continue to target it until the fish bites. In this clip, we finally located a big fish on a bed. So Andy is now targeting this fish with a drop shot tube. You'll notice as soon as Andy's bait makes it into the hot spot on the bed, the fish is so irritated that she picks the bait up immediately. Yes, I hear
What an absolute toad. Wow. So now that we've showed you how to catch big smallmouth on a bed, I really want to talk about how important it is to release these fish back onto their bed. That way they can go back down and finish the spawning cycle. Once the female has laid her eggs and they've been fertilized, the male will stick around on the bed and protect the eggs from nuisances like rock bass, bluegills, or crayfish. As you can see in this clip, we're seeing this fish display some of that behavior. Catching big bedded smallmouth has always been a lot of fun for me. I love being able to watch the fish and how they react and interact with your bait. It's just a beautiful process and a beautiful cycle. It was really amazing working on this project and getting to see these fish underwater and really how they took to our baits and the different techniques that we tried to employ. The big thing that I really want to make sure to stress in this video is to make sure you release the fish quickly back onto their bed to allow them to go and complete their spawning cycle. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, head on over, check us out on Instagram, and hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you on the water next time.